everyone. Welcome to the Bootleg uh, High School Sports Show from the Tennessean, talking high school football here in Middle Tennessee. This is week 11. We call this episode the push for the high school football playoffs. I'm Tom Crager. He's Michael Murphy. He'll talk the uh, X's and O's. I'll give you the playoff scenarios, and we'll have a great time here. A great show lined up. We want to talk about five big games that could affect your bracket. Yep. I'll be at one of them. I will be in the office manning down the, the floor. Seeing them all, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be, yeah. I'll, this, is my, this is my Christmas. Christmas Eve. This is it. So, uh, Ravenwood at Independence. It's our game of the week. Uh, we'll give our predictions in a, in a little while, but this is a big game in Region 6, 6A. Yep. This game will determine who wins that region champion. Independence wins, they're the champion. Them. If Ravenwood wins, we got to look at our next game, Brentwood and Centennial. It could either be Ravenwood or Brentwood. If Ravenwood wins and Centennial wins, then it's Ravenwood. If Ravenwood wins and then Brentwood wins, then it's Brentwood. Yeah, basically everybody but Independence needs help, really, to, to win yes. the chance. If Independence, they control their own destiny, mm -hmm. so to speak. If they win, they're champs. And, man, six weeks ago, did we ever think that was a possibility? No, we did not. This team has come a long way. And, um, you know, don't uh, don't sleep on uh, on Scott Blade's Independence team right, right now. They are in a team that is uh, playing some really good football. They've got some newcomers that are, are making big contributions. The, here's the, the thing it's hard to put my head around in Region 66A. You've got Centennial. Mm -hmm. Now, at one point, Centennial really played some great ball. They've kind of tailed off. At they had some injuries. they have. And, yes. I mean, it, it really hadn't been just a one mm -hmm. drop-off. They'll have a bad game and yeah. come back and do decent. It, but inconsistency. This, they need a big game. Mm-hmm. They need to beat Brentwood to basically get in. Either that yep. or Dixon has to beat Franklin. Franklin has played really good ball all season, played teams really tough. And let's be honest, Dixon's struggled here lately. They've lost yep. to Lawrence, coming off a loss to Lawrence County. That's going to be a tough one there. I think Centennial has to win to get in. But here's the scenario for Centennial. They can go anywhere from two yep. to four. They have the most uh, wiggle room, I guess you'd yes. say, going into the final week. If they win and uh, Independence, excuse me, if they win and, and Ravenwood wins, they're number two because they beat, they beat Independence. That, I mean, which uh, you, you th the Ravenwood over Independence seems more likely. But again, I mean, you, you think of what it's a dangerous team, very inconsistent, mm -hmm. but that Hung 62 on Independence mm -hmm. earlier this year, so they can score points. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for Brentwood, the main goal here, stop Jerry L. Wilson. Exactly, exactly. And that's your look at Region 66A, two of our big games of the yep. week that we're going to be tracking pretty closely because that, that region, those four teams going to the playoffs could go every which way. Yep. Region 5-4A. Here's what I know. Mm -hmm. Portland, what is, know? Portland is fourth. Okay. That's what I know. Okay. That's the only thing that's been decided. Springfield, they win, they're the champion. Yep. Similar to Independence, they mm -hmm. control the destiny. Yep, and if that happens, then Montgomery Central is second and Creekwood is third. Pretty easy, right? Yep. If they yeah. lose, if Creekwood wins this game, it gets all interesting. Creekwood would be one, excuse me, at Montgomery Central, they play Heritage, White House yep. Heritage. On paper, that should be a win. Yep. I will say... Uh, uh, Coach Coach Dickerson's team's gotten better, so don't just sleep on them just yet. But uh, more, if Creekwood wins, more, more than likely Montgomery Central is your champion, unless they get upset, and then Creekwood would be your champion. So Springfield, they can make life a lot easier with a win. Uh, and I'm sure Dustin Wilson, he's tuned in right now. He's probably saying, yeah, it would be a lot easier <laughs> if we could just win this game. So yep. they win, they're in. If not, look around because a couple things could happen. But that will be one of our games to watch Friday night, yep. that could be an interesting night in Region 5-4A. Region 4-6A. Yes. I'm the region guy. He's the region guy. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the scenario guy. Hendersonville at Mount Juliet. Very, very interesting game. Yeah, here. this is one of those games where, and there's quite a few this week, where the, this is the region championship game. Mm -hmm. Whichever team wins, you don't have yep. the math that gets Krieger all excited and all that. This is just <laughs> straight winner-take-all. Yep. Uh, I think the biggest game of the Justin, mm -hmm. uh, 
James Beasley. Mm -hmm. James Beasley era. Sorry, I wanted to call him mm -hmm. Justin. James Beasley era at Hendersonville. He's done a great job filling in for mm -hmm. Bruce Hatfield uh, the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, Justin Beasley does a great job with Channel 4, by the way. That's, I see. <laughs> I, this, it's not the first time this has happened, yeah, folks. Yeah. Uh, Commandos dropped that season opener against Blackman. We kind of mm -hmm. expected it. No surprise there. There was a mid-season loss to Franklin, though, that kind of had me scratching my head a little bit. As Tom said, Franklin's been, <laughs> Franklin's been playing everybody pretty tough, yes. though. And Henderson has taken care of business since. Mm -hmm. uh, Mount Juliet, 26-game regular season winning streak. Mm -hmm. The issue we look at with them is their strength of schedule. This Friday is going to be their third, just their third game this season against a team with a winning record. Mm -hmm. That could, I think Hendersonville, Mount Juliet has the better record. Hendersonville's better tested. I think that's kind of the storyline going into this one. Here's something to think about. And may, I, I know Trey Perry pretty well. Mm -hmm. And Trey, I'm sure, has thought about this. Yep. Hendersonville, let's just say Hendersonville up, beats Mount Juliet. I'd call it an upset. Yep. Mount Juliet is probably looking at playing, hosting Riverdale. And if they're not hosting Riverdale, they're probably hosting Blackman. Mm -hmm. Now, Riverdale isn't the Riverdale of last year, but Riverdale did beat Mount Juliet a year ago. Well, was that that game? Quite a shocker. So, so there's potential for us guys look at brackets, the bracketologists mm -hmm. of the room. We're here looking at regions. Me, uh, looking <laughs> at regions. That could be a very interesting week one matchup if that happened. Uh, you know, Hendersonville could get a, a rematch with with a Blackman yeah. if, if Blackman gets upset. And that, that was a rematch from last year's first round. Yeah, and remember that week one game, we saw, we expected that one to not be, a be close. Mm -hmm. and I it was think closer than we thought. A, a lot closer, and yeah. even earlier it was really, really yeah. close. So I think, yeah, we, we would have a different attitude into a potential rematch mm -hmm. there. So we'll see. That That's a game to watch. Winner The, the winner of this game is uh, going to be playing Cookville mm -hmm. in the first round of the playoffs. Last game we want to talk about... Tullahoma at Maplewood, again, for your people that it's like an easy, this is cut and dry. Yeah. Whoever wins this game is the region champion. Whoever loses, it, loses is, is the runner-up. Yeah. Uh, another, another big game. I mean, you got two teams with good offenses. They do it a little differently. Obviously, Maplewood throws it all over the place. Uh, Tullahoma is a little more balanced. Here's a, here's a note for this matchup. Both teams are looking for their first region championships in 2010. Wow. So, I mean, that's not super old. It's not like Paige when, you know, 1999 when they won. Had to do some work on that one. Yeah, yeah. This one was pretty easy. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, I thought that was an interesting little nugget there. Here's a nugget for you. For Tullahoma, this is the first time they'll be in the playoffs since 2014. Okay. Not as long as my streak that I just mentioned, but uh, go ahead. But here's, a, here's the interesting tidbit, too. Okay. That I, I led you up. <laughs> now, here's the, the – and did you know – they lost that first game in the playoffs, and that started a 21-game losing streak from two, from the end of 2014 to through the 2016 season. Yeah, they had some tough times, right? When you, when you came on board mm -hmm. as, the, as the sports coordinator, they were in the midst uh, of I, that I losing thought streak. We don't talk about coaches on the hot seat mm -mm. in high school. We try not to. We do, real, but we don't. We, we, we don't talk on camera. We don't <laughs> yeah. talk in print. We talk among ourselves. This, yep. this, I really thought John Olive was probably on the hot seat right about then because they were they were such a bad uh, losing streak and weren't playing great, whatever, and, and Tullahoma takes their football seriously. And that's a lot of wins for a coach to be on the hot seat. He's, he's up there oh, yeah. after career wins. He's, he, yeah. So he knows how to get it done, he's, and he, and he has been for the around. last year and a half. Uh, week 10, game of the week. You, you've seen some great games. Yeah. But I got one question for you. What about the big red? <laughs> shades of shades of post game Marty Uberard Uber there. Right. Yeah, they've uh, they've turned some heads this year, I mean, especially in the last two weeks. I think we mm -hmm. we kind of expected them to 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 show. I did at least, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, they they've been surprising. My question to you is, who saw this in August? Who saw, I mean, they're the region division two AAA East Middle Region champion. I didn't see that in August. Well, did, were you ready to make that? I, I I don't want to boast here because I didn't. We did the pre we did the preseason region predictions, uh -huh. but I think me it was a little tougher for me to put BA above NBA than it was for you. Okay. And I got it when when I saw him beat Macaulay. Mm -hmm. I knew this this team had something. I knew they didn't have the offensive explosive you know fireworks, and they still mm -hmm. don't. But I knew they had something. Then they beat Innsworth. Mm -hmm. Then they beat Brentwood Academy. 
and I think everyone is pretty much sold on them now. But the, I mean, he, to think about Brentwood Academy right now, they're not thinking their season's over. They're thinking, hey, mm -hmm. we've had a rematch with this team in the in the playoff in the mm -hmm. Blue Cross Bowl the last three years. Mm -hmm. There's certainly a chance that could happen again. So. Everyone, please, uh, as you have questions, please remind, you know, hit me up with questions. We'll try to get to them. If we don't get to them, we'll answer them on social media. But, um, you know, here's the thing, and I asked you, and we kind of got into it a little bit maybe in the <laughs> office. People probably maybe told us, may or may not told us to, to quiet, quiet down. Tell them, here's the thing, and I know we go back to Ty Chandler all the time, and I, I'm, I'm one of the worst at, at doing this, but... It's just, this is a team, and I, I call them the lunch pail kids. Mm -hmm. You know, they just bring their lunch pails to work, and they go to work, and they're hardworking kids, and they just they just go and get and, work done. And Tom doesn't think kids like that can win a championship. Well, no, he my question, no, 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 my and question, stats and stars. I'm, I'm a stat guy. I like numbers. I like to, like to look at numbers. And you're right. There's there's, there's no one that really stands really out. There really isn't. You got quarterback William Tyrone, mm -hmm. limited throwing the ball. He can run it. Mm -hmm. he, he's grown up a lot over the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, Sam Dugan at running back, he did not start the year as their starter. They had a, uh, I forget his name, he had a knee go. injury. Mm -hmm. He's Jackson there. Hanna. Jackson <laughs> Hanna's not running the football Well, well the, the two names they have are an offensive lineman, don't Jim get Jackson. a lot of press, and then Jackson Hanna, who has mm -hmm. been inserted in the offense. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got Ty Herbstreet, you got Josh Merriweather at tight end. They just, they don't throw mm -hmm. the ball a whole lot. Mm -hmm. So those guys make plays in spots, but yeah, the it's, this isn't a Tom Krieger team, ladies and gentlemen. This is a buddy of mine once said, you know, you need where's your money players? Where's your skill players that are that you're going to read about on on a, on a Saturday morning? So, I think they're on know. defense. I think they're on, okay. on special teams blocking punts. Mm -hmm. And I got to say, I think they might have the best punter in the entire state, at least Middle Tennessee. Cole Kreider, 39 yard average, not out of this world. He's landed 13 inside the 20. I personally mm -hmm. saw two inside the five. He's really, really good. I don't know. I guess when I'm thinking the championship, punters don't rate. But I'm man, thinking about field state championship teams. Is important, and they've won their last two games. When, with when I think about state championship teams, I'm not thinking about the the punter and how many times they put it inside the ten. But I see your point. My question is, you know, they do, they do this. I mean, they've been here, and, and at this point, you can't forget about what Marty Uverard has done since yeah, he's been there. I'm a Father Ryan graduate, guys. I'm not an NBA fan. I am just. I've been here, this is my fifth season. Mm -hmm. Like you said, they're always here, even yeah. when you don't see it, even when you don't predict it. Speaking of predictions, great segue, by the way. Great. Last week, folks, we picked six different games among our top ten games, mm -hmm. totally by accident, six different games that we disagreed on. Yep. We both went seven and three. Yep. Split them. We're 77 and 22. We haven't factored in the, what, Hickman County, Lewis County game. We'd probably have to go back and factor that because that was a game. So I, I believe we play. both picked Lewis County. Yeah, I think we're yeah. good there. So I think I we're probably I... 78 and 22 now since, you know, they played that game last week. Mm -hmm. You know, because that was a postponed game mm -hmm. from a few weeks ago. So I hate, we're not going to have the, uh, uh, from what, I, from what look, it looks like we don't have the disparity this, this week. I think maybe, folks, I'll be honest with you, I think you may have looked at my scores, to be honest with you. So, but, uh, but maybe that means we'll have a great week. Could so, be. Well, let's, let's know start. the ones last week before we agreed on 4-0. So, there you go. agree, there it tends, you go. To, it tends there to. There you go. Uh, Ravenwood at Independence. It's our game of the week. Mm -hmm. Who you got? I got Ravenwood in a close one. 28-27 mm -hmm. could easily go the other way. Raptors fans aren't going to like this. That victory is going to give... Rival Brentwood, the region title. So you're pretty, that's one of the game later down the road. Yeah. So you're just let the cat out of the bag. Just a little preview for you. I'm folks. going 35-28. I'm out of all the games on this list. Um, I think this was the one I struggled the most of of picking the, the winner. I think Independence is playing some of the best ball uh, they've had all season. They've made a big surge. That one, I, I think. Um, I still want to see what Chase Bishop's role is on this team after mm -hmm. a couple of weeks. It's a crowded, crowded. Yeah. Uh, Can they figure cast. out ways to get him? I mean, do they have too many receivers on this team? Uh, so, so I'm going Ravenwood 35, Independence 28. Wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if this game is in the 50s. Um, and on TV, man, I might be there. He may midnight. he may be there till 2 a.m. Folks, the the the, the, the play may be asking them to run the clock so they can get the brackets done. Uh, and there's, I'm only half, I'm only half kidding there. 
Hendersonville at Mount Juliet. Uh, we talked earlier, this is a game that determines Region 4 6A. I'm going Mount Juliet 21, Hendersonville 17. I know they haven't had a lot of big games, but I've seen this, this team in practice for the season. There's a lot of talent on this yep. Mount Juliet team, and yeah, they, they, it's not really their fault. They're not tested yep. as much as they have been. And that, I also picked Mount Juliet 21-10. Biggest test of the year for Trey mm-hmm. Perry and the Golden Bears. I think they pass it, though. Okay. Tullahoma at Maplewood, Region 4-4A championship. Who do you have? Got Maplewood, 37-21. I think Tullahoma scores in this game, but I, I saw this Maplewood defense force three red zone, had three red zone stops in their win over Nolensville. I think that's going to make the difference. I think they'll come up with a couple stops, pull away late. But will they hang on to the ball? Because that was the part of problem with Nolensville, second half. I mean, they, they, pull, they got back in the game because of their own turnovers. Yep. Was not the... Uh, wasn't the best performance of the season for Maplewood last year. I wrote a, wrote a story about mm-hmm. that. Uh, they had a week off with fall break, uh, had a bye week. I think they'll get back on track. Maplewood. Maplewood. Maplewood, 35, Tullahoma 27, 1 2 there in the region. Creekwood at Springfield. Springfield, I like this team. I like Dayron Johnson. I'm not gonna, you, don't, you don't have to use his nickname anymore. Just call him Dayron. Everyone knows him. Caught a lot of touchdowns. He might catch one this week. Springfield 21, Creekwood 7. Springfield makes things easy in Region 5 4A uh, with us deciding the brackets there, and they'll be the region champ. Yeah, Creekwood's played great defense, mm-hmm. especially over this last stretch. I think Fat Cat, I'll use his nickname, Fat Cat, and the Yellow Jackets mm-hmm. are going to be a little too much. I like Springfield 24 17. Well, the other thing, Creekwood hasn't really thrown the ball well at all, whereas Springfield has shown they can do both. And when you got a good D, running the ball, shortening the games, that's that's not a bad thing to do. Upperman uh, hosting Sequatchie County. Um, I know nothing about Sequatchie County. I know they've beat some pretty I know Blake Metzger's pretty folks. good, though. Exactly. Blake well, Metzger's pretty good at Upperman, and that's enough of what I need to know. Upperman 28, Sequatchie County 14. I'll go Blake Metzger plus an Upperman defense that's averaging less than seven points a game, allowing less than seven points a game. I'm going Upperman 21-10. You don't know that much about Sequatchie either, do you? A little bit. Uh, little they, bit. Beat, they beat York. Big win there. <laughs> Brentwood Academy and Ensworth. Brentwood Academy's lost two straight games, both at home. Don't know the last time that happened. I believe it wasn't this century. I think it was 99 or before. That has not happened in a while. Is that something I need to look up? Uh, could could be if you have your secret secret <laughs> book somewhere. Who you got? I got Brentwood Academy. Uh, they're I, we just talked about it. Two straight losses. They're playing an Innsworth team though that's only averaging 17 points in region play this year. Uh, I don't know if they even get there. I take Brentwood Academy 28-10 in this one. Here's the question I have for you. Mm-hmm. Were we so were, were we? Quick believers in in BA because of the success, you well, think? Yeah, proven success. Not just last year's okay. success, but I'm talking the same way I was sold They've, on BA's. MBA's kind okay. of past success. It's just you got a good coaching staff. Some mm-hmm. great players have moved on, but mm-hmm. I mean they've still done a good job. Yeah, I just those their young their, their offense has been a lot different. Um, a lot of they don't, they don't throw the ball near the Read like option is, is what it RPO. Would be. Yeah, I, I guess. But it's, it's a lot of right? who got the ball on that one. Uh-huh. So. But they're good at it. And Ensworth uh, is not what we kind of thought they might be. But uh, BA wins this. They get a bye in the first round. That's probably the biggest thing. Yeah, that's thing what for, they're playing that's for. That's what they're playing for there. Be third place in the in the region. And it's been a while since you'd say BA was third in, in the region. Mm-hmm. So uh, 27-20 BA over Ensworth is my prediction. Rossview at Lebanon. Interesting game there. That determines, I believe, third and fourth. Third and fourth, yeah. I think there's a pretty big drop-off between third and fourth in this league, though. And I think Lebanon proves that, and I think they win big 33-14. I picked a close one, 21-14. Todd Hood has is, 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 is done a great job there. He has. And, uh, you know, Lebanon's come a long way with uh, Chuck Gentry and you know, Zion, that defense has played real, real well. I think we commented their, their offense has gotten Their better. offense is really coming along. I think they've scored at least 35 in their last three. Rossview will keep things a little bit closer, 21-14. to 14, uh, Lebanon over Rossview, but in a close one. Back in the day, de- well, they still call this, but this has been called 
the backyard brawl. This is in Krieger's backyard. It isn't. It's literally in my backyard. I mean, within a couple blocks, really. Riverdale at Blackman, the backyard brawl. Um, this is this. There's been some dandies in this in this series. Um, who do you have at the Inferno? I got the plays. Riverdale. They've they've done pretty well in region play. They beat the teams they should or could beat. Uh, I don't think Blackman's one of those teams. I think the Blaze win 34-14. Interesting. I'm going to go Blackman 38-21. Um, Blackman will be two. Riverdale will be three. You know, it's it's setting up really in that league is um, setting up for a Blackman-Oakland uh, quarterfinal game unless uh, a Mount Juliet or Hendersonville have something to say with it. Um, but uh, it kind of sh- looks that way, barring an yeah. upset, I think. FRA at uh, CPA. Yep. This game is not over. This series, mm-hmm. this thing is not over yet yep. if FRA uh, can win this game. And I think Ann Lipscomb has to beat um, BGA. Yep. Which, anything can happen. Thoughts? Waiting on me? I'm yeah. going to wait for you. I'll uh, go. Go ahead. Uh, I think the, the three dandy dozen guys in this game is... is well, could you bring out the dandy dozen? That's what I'm focused on, especially now that Lance Wilhoyt is healthy. I mean, uh-huh. FRA got off to a slower start, 0-2 start, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. He wasn't there. They were coming close. They started winning. He came back. Mm-hmm. I think they're playing their best ball of the season. I don't think it's going to be enough. I think CPA is one of the best teams mm-hmm. in our whole area. Mm-hmm. They haven't closed things out yet in region. I think they do Friday, though. I think they win 42-24. Close. This was the one you thought I was peeking yeah. on. Yeah, I thought you were peeking there. I picked 42-21 CPA over, over FRA. I agree with a lot you said. Uh, Brogan Wilson, FRA Bro. running back, uh, had, had, a, had himself a game last week. Um, Playing really well. They, they've, here's the thing they've done with without Lance Wilhoyt, they found ways to win games. Yeah, yeah. That's the most important thing uh, that I can say about, about about the FRA. They lost their star power, their their, their offensive star, their money player. They said you know, the skill guy that they go to Krieger's kind of guy, my guy that I like to see. And they and they found other skill guys that can they can Riley beat. Speed. The guys that the, the 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 guys you hear about read about on Saturdays. They had they found Riley Speed. Uh, Sean Casey developed uh, in his first year. Brogan Wilson, I mentioned yeah. him earlier. Some guys developed into players that can can do things on the field on a, at their level yep. uh, on a Friday night. I just think CPA is too good. Uh, that's why I, just, I, I think just, Kane Patterson. You, people aren't aren't running toward Kane Patterson. He's not having to run the ball as much because you've got the uh, West and Madden. And you know they got Ellis quarterback. They go to him and, in the red zone though. He's got nine nine mm-hmm. rushing touchdowns. So and you got you throw in Noah Noah uh, Henderson. Henderson. They've got enough players there. This this is a team. This is a special CPA team that can make a deep run in November, I believe. So forty two twenty one. That goes into our last discussion, our last game. Centennial at Brentwood. You kind of let the cat on the bag on who you're picking. So just go ahead and give me a score. Twenty eight seventeen Bruins. 28-7, Brentwood over Centennial is my pick. Uh, I think this team is inspired. They've now played a game uh, since the loss of, of of their former teammate, Lucas Davis, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, th- this will be a special night at Brentwood. It'll be their first home game since his loss. Yeah. And it'll be, it'll be kind of an emotional time for them as well. But I just think right now Brentwood's playing really good ball. K- Kate Granzow. Good job at quarterback there, and and they've got some special. They got some players. Yeah, they really do. They're, they're younger yeah. guys. Mm-hmm. Walker Merrill, wide mm-hmm. receiver. He's mm-hmm. starting to blow up on the recruiting circuit. He's been really good. Um, I say again, stop Jerry L. Wilson, mm-hmm. the region champs. Jordan, I like Jordan Nichols there, the running back. Avery Williams, and then the McKechnie. 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 I believe it's McKechnie. He, this, I think he's a slot guy for him. Mm-hmm. He does a little bit of running little back, of, wide receiver. They move he's, done, he's done a really good job for them as well. Those those guys there. And like I said, they're a Ron Crawford team. They're well coached. They're going to do what they need to do to win games. And, you know, I think they'll. I think the Centennial team is probably a little too one-dimensional with Jerry uh, Wilson there. They lost uh, their quarterback a couple weeks yeah. ago. That's been, that's been mm-hmm. painful for them. Yep. So, Brentwood 28-7. So, uh that does it for our rapid fire 
Uh, before we go, folks, I want to talk about a special addition to the bootleg. And this is something that we've been talking about here and here in our office. We're going to give you something that you will not see anywhere else in Nashville or anywhere else in the state. We're going to give you a special edition playoff show Friday night, close to around, look for us around midnight, right here. Well, we'll be in a different room. Actually, we'll be right there. We're actually going to be in a different room, <laughs> folks. We're going to have some special guests. We'll have some coaches we'll be talking to, talking about their matchups and about their seasons. It's going to be a great show. Please join us Friday. Look for us around midnight. Hopefully, the TLC play will have their playoff brackets announced by that time. So, and if not, we'll figure out we'll figure out who they're playing. And, and trust me, the people we're having, they'll know who they're playing by that yeah. time. So, uh, but hopefully we'll have brackets up um, by that time. I hear we might even have an impression or two. Well, that's a, that's what makes this show so special because they know. don't know what they may get. But they I'm may a, get I'm some special teaser. things. You're teasing it. But, hey, please come back here to this same spot uh, for a special edition of the playoffs. And it's going to be a great show where we, t- we talk to some of our top coaches in Middle Tennessee. So, make sure you join in. And that does it for week 11. 11. It's a long 11 weeks. Yep. I'm glad I had a break somewhere around week 7 or week 8. I'll take mine. We're going to the playoffs, folks. Uh, make sure you come join us uh, and, and be with us. We'll see you next week.